am happy that many students, thanks to Yasha, are going to visit. Uh, so enjoy the opening, the screenings, and the formal panel we have tonight. And now I leave the floor to Joseph Sharma, President of Italian Heritage and Culture Committee. Thank you. Good evening. Buonasera. Welcome. Um, I'm here because I'm the President and Chair of our Italian Heritage and Culture Committee of New York. And the reason we are here is because uh, Dr. Paradiso and uh, Maria Teresa have su suggested this special uh, program, and um, we became a partner to it. And so our foundation has assisted in some small way. But most of all, I want to recognize the fact that we are doing this because this year, each year, the Italian Heritage and Culture Committee selects a theme. And this year, 2015, which is coming to a quick end, has been about Italian creativity uh, with an emphasis on science and technology. And so I can tell you that having gone to the Milan Expo and having been um, back in 1965, I hate to admit, but I was there, uh, to the New York World's Fair, I've seen both. And of course, the one in Milan was absolutely uh, scientific, technological, and if you made all the trips to the many countries and buildings, it was really overwhelming. So I'm really delighted that I made that trip. So Maria, I think I would like to present this to you as well as to uh, Dr. Van Straten, and he's here. Whenever you would suggest your representatives, um, this is one of our uh, original posters with all of our love and affection. As you can see, the emphasis is on, on science and technology, uh, both years, 2015, 1965, and our resident artist has done this, uh, John DeSantis. Um, on a lighter note, when you see the exhibit, what I'm excited about is that we Italian Americans, we have some of your Italian DNA, naturally, that goes back. But I, I like the fact that the recent astronaut was able to have an espresso. <laughs> so I thought that was great. So congratulations tonight. Welcome to all. And thank you for inviting us. There are members of the board throughout the room. I'd ask if they please stand and be recognized. The members of the board, you know who you are. Uh, the Italian Culture Committee, please. Dr. <laughs> of uh, international relationships uh, uh, of the uh, agency in New York that deals with business and promote uh, and support startups and technology and so on. Thank you. Um, I have to say that I, I've been speaking in public so much promoting New York, but this is the first time I feel a little bit emotional because I am Italian and I'm speaking about New York to Italians, and it's a, but uh, it's, that's actually the truth. So, well, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm coming here to say, uh, give, big, give you the salute of the city, uh, New York City, and uh, the mayor, and the New York City Economic Development Corporation, which is basically the agency that su supports all the economic development growth in New York City. And we're really focused on supporting the innovation ecosystem in New York. So that includes, of course, all the, the maker space here and uh, all the bunch of other sectors that are key for the future of, of the city. Uh, one thing that uh, I, it's a funny thing that happened today. I have to always check with my PA team, public affairs team, wherever I go, even if I have to take a little coffee with some people who might be a journalist or something. So I say, do you have any ideas of what to do there? And they check this out, but this is something to promote innovation in Italy. You have to promote New York. How about, how about you give this to them? And there's a, a new, uh, an, an entrepreneur in Brooklyn who makes a very special coffee machine. And so I told them, yes, I can do anything for New York. I can even join the army. And you know, for, if you want to secede from the rest of the country, but don't make me go there and promote coffee. <laughs> because that's the only thing I cannot do in, in, ever in my life. So just quickly, uh, I, I think this is a great example of innovation happening in, uh, in Italy. And uh, of course, as an Italian, as a New Yorker, I'm very proud of this. I believe that New York is a very welcoming place we want to make sure it is welcoming for companies that come here. One of them, we have a big example here that has already uh, set up office out not only in New York, and I'm trying to explain that 
even to my fellow New Yorkers here, that it's not a zero-sum game. If a company comes here, brings jobs here, it makes not only Italy grow, but at the same time, if we bring our companies to Italy, because it's the innovation sector is, is, uh, is growing over there, it's also good for us. They grow there and they grow here. So many more of these um, events are really welcome and thank you again. Thank you, Gianluca. Thank you so much. So welcome everybody to the party because this is a party to celebrate uh, uh, Italy, Italian uh, creativity and technology and to celebrate uh, P101, Programma 101, in uh, April. I was watching the TV, the news on TV, and uh, uh, I saw Ford bringing up to the top of uh, the Impulsive Building uh, uh, the Mustang to celebrate 50 years uh, from its uh, launch exactly the, at the World Fair. So I thought, okay, Americans are excellent at uh, uh, marketing, uh, celebrating their achievements, but we Italian also have many things to celebrate, and uh, I recalled that uh, during the same fair, P11 was launched. So I called my friend uh, Riccardo Luna here, and uh, I told him, why don't you do something to celebrate P11? And, uh, and immediately embraced an initiative. And uh, since then, we have uh, uh, done a lot of things. So actually, the story for me started a couple of years before. I was at the time in 2010, the editor-in-chief of Wired Italy, the magazine. And uh, a video maker came up to me with this DVD, the, the old film. It was a short film, like 30 minutes run. And uh, there was this astonishing story, because it said that the, the, the first personal computer in history was, was being made and prototyped and made in Italy. And nobody in Italy knew this story before. Nobody, I think nobody also in the United States. It was a brand new story. Actually, it was a forgotten story. So I, I love the story that much that, I, I, that when I wrote a book about innovation in Italy, I wrote a, the, the, a whole chapter about this story. Because it was, as I told you, a neglected story. It's a part of our history, a part of our identity as a nation. And uh, after that, uh, when uh, together with Massimo Banzi and, uh, and uh, Carlo Benedetti, we, we took part in the foundation of the Make in Italy, a foundation about makers and Fab Lab. The first thing we did was to organize an exhibition, a big exhibition. You see in New York City here, a small exhibition, but a big exhibition about 50 years of Italian innovation. So P101 was the beginning of a story. It was very important for our country because in Italy, usually we don't have the perception to be a, a country where innovation can flourish and blossom. And so we, we, we launched this exhibition at the Maker Fair in 2014, and in three in days, Rome. In, three Rome. Rome. Yes, in the three days, around 100,000 people seen the exhibition. It was so successful that uh, we, 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 have, we have the new exhibition in Milan during the Expo 2000. Uh, 2015, and um, for six months. It was in two locations, one in the Expo site, the other one in the Innovation Museum of Leonardo da Vinci, for six months. So it was, it was a really, we, we, uh, thanks to these guys, Paolo Cibretto, which is the main video maker, we had the opportunity to, to just to, to rewrite history and to gain a new identity as a country. Yeah, and in the meantime, uh, Riccardo has been appointed also the digital champion of uh, Italy. Not uh, just for this, not just for this reason. No. <laughs> <laughs> the launch was a great deal. It was organized by Gianluigi Garbetti, uh, who initially was supposed to come, but unfortunately is 92 and wasn't feeling uh, too good, so he couldn't come. But uh, he called me on the phone the other day, and he told me the story of the launch of the PO11 here in New York. Uh, he was the CEO of Olivetti in America those days, uh, and later he joined uh, um, the Agnelli company, uh, financial company. And he told me that because uh, um, Roberto uh, Olivetti, um, the uh, manager responsible for the electronics department uh, at Olivetti, uh, wanted to make a splash, he wanted to make a really big event about this computer, uh, so he decided to rent uh, the ballroom at the plaza, uh, the most prestigious place. And uh, he uh, appointed the Ruggiero Orlando, somebody, uh, somebody may remember Ruggiero Orlando, qui Ruggiero Orlando da New York. So he appointed him to uh, present the P101. You may think, wow, Ruggiero Orlando, what does he have to do with the computers? Actually, he, was, uh, he had a degree in mathematics, uh, and he knew very well uh, all this stuff. 
And uh, together with the sun, right, they had a genial idea, like a baby told me. They decided to calculate the orbit of a satellite around the moon with a computer that, uh, that day. So they did the calculation and they were able to show uh, the orbit. So uh, Gabetti said it was a great success. Uh, the audience was uh, captivated for uh, 40 minutes. And uh, we believe that that's why NASA, a few years later, but first of all, NASA bought uh, 45 uh, uh, Programma 101 computer, computers made by Gabetti. And then uh, NASA used it to calculate the landing on the moon of Apollo 11 in 1969. I talked uh, with uh, uh, NASA also, and uh, there is still an engineer uh, who works at uh, NASA in Houston who used uh, P-101 and he said it was fantastic at, that, at those days. First time that uh, uh, Federico, personal, one, yeah. personal microchip of Federico Fagi, because I called him the other day and they asked me if he had uh, by any chance uh, his original uh, piece and he said, oh, let me see, and he found it and he sent it to us together with the, um, a, a, a big uh, uh, image of what it is inside. And what it is inside, it's called artwork, and uh, when he created it, um, he thought it was so beautiful that he signed it with his initials, FF, like it was a, a, a piece of art. Um, and after the microchip, for instance, also the accelerometer inside the, every iPhone, every smartphone, they, they've been invented and made in, in Italy at the STM Microelectronics in Agrade Brianza, actually, so near Milan. And uh, the story start, uh, uh, continues with Arduino, exactly 40 years after the Programma Centurno, in, in the same city, Ivrea, this man invented together with four friends Arduino. So, Massimo Manzi. I have a question. Uh, so, is he working? Yes, it's working. So, uh, you, there is a link between Arduino and P101. Uh, what is it about? Uh, I mean, uh, is it uh, the fact that simplicity and beauty can go together with technology? Well, actually, there are several links in a way because uh, we came up with Arduino uh, in this design school that used to exist in Ivrea and the building where we, uh, uh, where the school was, was the building where the research and development office of Olivetti used to be in the city in the 60s. So in a way, in the same building we had this design school, we came up with that. Actually, I, at, about that time I read the story of the Programma 101 because of the sort of the, the the person who led the development, uh, Mr. Perotto, wrote a book that was free available online. So I read the story, I was fascinated. Actually, the product that I made before Arduino was called Programma 2003, because I kind of took the name and it was 2003, so I used that name. So oh, the book. Oh, look at that. The Perotto, the Perotto book reprinted. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this is a gift for the library of the Institute. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> So yeah, so I guess one of the things also that we, I guess we try to do, uh, the Arduino is born in design school to try to help people to make complex and contemporary technology available to people that don't have a background in software and hardware that are not engineers. My students are designers, artists, they don't, they don't know anything about electronics and software when they come to the school, so you know, the tool was designed to make those technologies available to them as simple as possible. In a way, you know, Programma 101 was made computing available on your desk for an amount of money that at the time was incredible. $8,000 was a huge amount of money in the 60s, but uh, it was a lot less than a, than a, than a computer the size of a room. Right? And the same, you know, we have to be, you know, we decided to make it, we decided to price it at 20 euros because I thought it was more or less the cost of a pizza dinner. <laughs> and you know, if you have to deal with students, it's easier for them to say, I'm going to skip a pizza and buy one of these uh, circuits. Uh, so, okay. Sorry, Massimo, to interrupt you. Talking about pizza, uh, let's talk about coffee. Arduino, the name comes from? It comes from a bar in Ivrea. Yeah. Well, because in Ivrea, a lot of things are called Arduino something. Because he was the first king of Italy, technically. Yeah. And uh, self proclaimed. Well. <laughs> <laughs> very often, you need the people to say, I'm the king. 
<laughs> and, so, <laughs> and, and so yeah, it, it comes from that. But I guess also I have to say just quickly, so I don't want to sort of. Uh, there's a there's a, there's obviously a part of of of, of US inside that group because the the people who invented the product were five people. Two of them are from the US, and actually one of them works and lives here in New York. Tom Igo is a professor at NYU. And uh, he's, he's not here with us tonight because he's having a very painful dental you know, operation right now. So you know, uh, he couldn't make it uh, because of that. But, um, but I think it's important when we talk about Italian creativity. I think obviously there are Italians in the group who you know, invented the thing, but it was important there was a design school made in Italy that offered a lot of the things that are very, uh, you know, the people love about Italy that made a lot of people from around the world want to be there in that school. And then we kind of put together people from different countries and we were able to kind of you know, generate this idea with the contribution of many people from many countries. But in a way, you know, the creativity there is to create an environment where people want to be, that it's conducive to innovation, to, 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 to new thinking. thinking. Can, can you give us uh, some examples of uh, things that you can make with uh, Arduino? Well, for example, uh, a lot of the sort of low-cost 3D printers that you see right now either have some kind of a Arduino uh, uh, computer inside or they are derived from our product. One of the things that is kind of more, I guess, one of the important thing about Arduino is that it's open source. This means that the plans for the hardware, the software, the documentation, everything is available online. Anybody can design a circuit based on our work. And in fact, you know, in many 3D printers, drones, uh, you know, home automation, but even medical instruments, people have designed all sorts of applications. It's actually very difficult to pick. They also made the chair that sends a tweet message when you fart. So it goes from saving the world to the tweeting farting chair, but uh, you know, in between there is a lot of uh, crazy innovation. Yeah, in a very famous uh, popular TED talk that you gave uh, three years ago, you said that you don't need anybody permission to invent wonderful things now. It's like the statement of an innovation without permission. Well, I guess because you know when I deal with students and they approach the technology that they feel they are complex. There is still this distance between the technology, you know, as Gaston was saying, you know, it's almost like they're, you know, the priests of technology and it's too distant for us. And effectively, the technology, modern technology is not that complex. So in a way, the, uh, sometimes people feel like they need some kind of permission or authorization in order to enter this world of com complex modern technology when they don't need it. They should just invent. Thank you, Massimo. Alessandro, Alessandro Piol is uh, uh, the son of El Senor Piol, and now uh, we will tell you who, who is El Senor Piol. He's uh, uh, the co-founder of Ata Ventures, a company of uh, venture capital based in New York. He's also the co-author of the book we wrote, Tech in the City, about uh, uh, technology startups in New York and the story of uh, New York as a technology hub during the last uh, 20 years. Uh, so, first of all, your father, how is he? And uh, have you ever heard the stories uh, uh, about the P11 by him? Well, <clears throat> back then I was a little young, so I, <laughs> I uh, don't remember personally, but uh, the, um, yes, I mean, I've, I've heard the stories of the products that uh, like they uh, invented over the years. I mean, in fact, I want to make a comment because it really struck me uh, when uh, Ricardo was talking about the fact that he found this story that nobody knew about and uh, that wasn't celebrated. Uh, and it's interesting because when you think about innovation here in the US, you notice that uh, you know, everybody knows the story of Apple Computer, everybody knows the story of Bill Gates and Microsoft, everybody knows these this stories of uh, technology innovation and so on. because. The, uh, because in this country, you tend to celebrate success. And uh, you never know the good at doing that. And uh, it's one of the, uh, I think it's one of the problems uh, to, uh, we need to really celebrate innovation more. And I really hope that uh, um, we can start, start with celebrating Arduino and then uh, many, many more success stories. But um, um, to go back to your question, the, the, 
um, you know, it, it <clears throat> some of the stories. I mean, uh, my, my father actually started working for Olivetti in the in the mid fifties, and uh, he spent forty years in the company. So he's sort of a he's a piece of history uh, at Olivetti, and he was. Uh, the person that uh, was personally involved with the marketing side for the P101, they was involved with a, a number of uh, different products. You know, came to the U.S. was involved with the work Olivetti did here. He was involved with the venture capital investments Olivetti made. He was involved with Olivetti entering the telecom industry. So he's really he's really seen every aspect of uh, of uh, the evolution of the, this great company. And, um, he was he was crucial in uh, uh, the making of P11 because at a certain point Olivetti had to sell the electronics division uh, to General Electric because uh, it was uh, under difficult uh, financial times and uh, um, they sold everything but El Serino was uh, smart enough to conceal P11. He pretended that it was not a computer; it was just a, a normal calculator, and so uh, and he changed in, uh, in a way, cheated a little uh, the contract, uh, and so uh, P11 remained with Olivetti, and so El Sino was able then to bring it uh, here to uh, to New York, right? Yeah, exactly, uh, yes. yeah. and and uh, he's also very important in supporting uh, has been very important in supporting new startups. <coughs> For example, was the first uh, investor believing in Ux, which is uh, uh, provide uh, provide uh, in uh, in uh, our exhibition uh, the first global uh, startup. Ux is uh, this fashion uh, uh, online platform. It's like the Amazon of fashion. Exactly, the Amazon of fashion. Yeah, yeah. So in, uh, after he retired from Olivetti in the mid nineties, he started uh, his second career in venture capital, and he was involved with a number of uh, interesting company, including uh, the first. Uh, Internet service provider in Italy called Fiscali, and uh, and then more recently, you know, the, in the uh, mid 2000s, uh, uh, also Yux, which has been a very a big success story. You you too are an investor, and you have invested also in Italian startups, uh, like uh, for example uh, Osorea, based here in New York uh, and founded by a brilliant uh, 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 Alberto Pesce, <laughs> right? Business, yeah. So. In fact, I don't know if you see or not, but uh, yes. Uh, what, what about Italian? No, the, in Italy uh, there are um, many brilliant uh, engineers. In, 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 my, my, my field is technology, so when I, when I think about startups, I think mostly about technology companies. But uh, there is a number of other companies one can talk about, which is you know, from biotech to, uh, to to food tech, even to fashion tech, all these things. Uh, but you know, just just by looking at technology, there are many brilliant engineers, many brilliant developers in Italy. There are some. Um, you, you get that when you have an ecosystem that has good education, and Italy has great universities. If you think about Pisa, Milan, Turin, Bari, Napoli, and so on, there are many great centers of innovation, center of technology in the universities. And great engineers come out of these of this, uh, universities, and many of them have uh, been involved uh, in companies or have started companies. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, many of them have left Italy to do that. So if you go to Silicon Valley, for instance, or Boston, or even here, there are a number of uh, Italian entrepreneurs that uh, have studied, been educated in Italy, but then decide to uh, to move abroad because uh, the environment was better to start companies. And uh, I'm lucky enough to invest in a couple of them, and uh, hopefully be able to do more in the future. And so let's talk about Olivetti because Olivetti was like the Apple of the times, like in the 50s and 60s. Like the Olivetti stores reminds a lot like the Apple stores now. It was a, a great company for design and for inventing future. And uh, I have news for you. Olivetti is still alive. And here we have the CEO, Ricardo De Leon. So what's doing Olivetti now? Thank you, first of all, for all this uh, great celebration of Olivetti, because Olivetti is a great company. Olivetti is alive. I'm alive. I'm here. Okay, so that's good news. As a matter of fact, Olivetti has passed various phases. Uh, Alessandro just said, moved from uh, uh, the, uh, let's say, it started a long time before, uh, we have to say a little bit, because Olivetti was founded in 1908 and started doing a writing machine, famous Olivetti. Then it became, get, get, got into the, let's say, more computer science in the electronic 
then informatics, and then telecommunications. Uh, uh, Olivetti is in a very important group in Italy, which is Telecom Italia, so it's still well funded by Telecom Italia. And Olivetti now is doing and is moving towards the digital. What's digital? It's lots of things. Uh, we're starting uh, doing 3D printers. A few weeks ago, we launched our first 3D printer. And one, uh, one machine is here. And one right. machine, actually, we brought it here to, to show it, which is quite interesting because it's a machine, let's say, very different from how it began, for example, Q101. Q101 is a, was founded by those guys, those, uh, let's say, very youngsters that uh, in four walls within the company, they started to do research, started to follow an idea. Uh, lots of things happened from then. In this 50 years, one of the main things I would just point out is the internet and the, let's say, the sharing of knowledge all over the all over the places. So the, what I call the open innovation. And uh, I truly believe, and Olivier truly really believes, to get innovation from the startups. And the uh, inside, of, inside that machine, there is Arduino. Inside there are, there are two things. First of all, we got a partnership with a little startup, an Italian startup, which is called GMAX. Had a good technology, had good development, needed to have an industrial approach. Secondly, it has an Arduino uh, platform for the hardware, which is even a, an open source uh, solution. So we are moving towards an open innovation to bring in startups, Italian and why not also from abroad, uh, towards bringing the digital into the into the industrial uh, economy, I would say industrial manufacturer, but also other things that obviously uh, 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 Olivetti is doing, for example, uh, printers and uh, retail solutions uh, and digital education. So Olivetti is there, uh, probably is not as famous as Apple because it addresses to a specific market, but nevertheless there is a lot. Lots of innovation, lots of creativity. Uh, one thing about the Apple, um, the designer of P101 is uh, Mario Bellini, a very famous uh, uh, worldwide designer. And uh, uh, when Steve Jobs came back the second time to Apple, he called Bellini and he asked him to go and work with Apple, right? But unfortunately, Unfortunately, uh, I don't know. Unfortunately for Steve Jobs, Bellini had a contract uh, with Olivetti that couldn't break, and so he stayed uh, in Italy, right? Yes. So, also about Apple, a couple of days ago in uh, Milan, there was Tim Cook, the actual CEO of Apple, and uh, I was lucky because the Prime Minister asked me to join them for lunch. And actually, I, could, I cannot tell anything about the lunch because it was a private lunch, but when I, at the end they had to stand up and leave the lunch because they had a flight to come to New York. I said, Sorry, I have to leave, I have to go to New York. And he asked me why. Because well, with New York, they're going to celebrate the first personal computer. And he, he, he asked me, the one by Bosniak and Steve Jobs. I said, no, it's one made by Italians years before. And so I, I, I told the whole story to Tim Cook. I actually didn't know that, though. <laughs> it, was, it was a very lucky opportunity. You learned something. Uh, yeah, here we see in, uh, in, in the room uh, a friend and uh, an inventor and a creator he is, who is profiled in the exhibition, but he was not in the, in, in the program, and this is a very nice surprise. Enrico Dini, will you come here? Thank you. So, the, the problem is not, not having Enrico in the exhibition in your city because it's because uh, he makes, makes huge 3D printers, so we, they couldn't fit in the room. The largest one in the world, right? So Rico, what about you? About, oh, what you about me? I'm moving here to New York. Right? <laughs> All the Italians that are pursuing to achieve their greater good. Uh, is, it, is it true that uh, you are going to print a house upstate in New York? Yes, in Gardner, uh, hopefully next year, when uh, some issues will be solved uh, with uh, the Italian army, who should borrow us the printer to print a house here. But uh, this is a promise, uh, it's a commitment. So, uh, 